During the flight, we had three periods of EVA, two stand-up EVAs where I was using uh, either just the spacecraft hoses or an extension hose, and the other EVA was an umbilical EVA. Uh, back in the adapter, uh, we had uh, rigged up back there several different connectors and, uh, and hose connections and hooks and rings, just basic tasks to be done, not uh, necessarily to say that these were important tasks, but to evaluate the restraint system that we had uh, established back there, these uh, foot restraints, or golden slippers as they're called. And I'll say that uh, there really is nothing better than this type of restraint system. Uh, the situation is very similar to just being in, in one, gra one G environment. The, the only difference is that the, the things that you're working with with your hands uh, tend to move, uh, move around in a way that they don't in 1G. Uh, to summarize what the lessons of what I think we learned from uh, our EVA on this flight, first I think we learned uh, <clears throat> the value, the great value of a restraint system. In order to perform a task in EVA, we first must take the time to set up a restraint to the body that will substitute for the 1G that we have down here where, where our feet are in contact with the ground. We have to fix the, uh, the body in a position where we can then devote our entire effort to the task at hand. The second uh, lesson that I think we learned is, uh, concerns the value of the underwater training that we had. Uh, this was extremely valuable to us in letting us go through the entire timeline of the EVA mission. Uh, the uh, third lesson that I think we learned was that uh, sincere and intense training and very close attention to equipment familiarization uh, really pays off in these type of efforts, and there's just no substitute for uh, very close training.